In this video, I want to talk through and show how I'm going to replace the decode logic that I currently have on my breadboard. Um, finding that uh, maybe that uh, logic isn't real well organized on the breadboard and I've got wires everywhere. Uh, some of them are just uh, intended to be temporary jumper wires and some of them I haven't fully wired in yet uh, because my deco logic is still evolving pretty quickly as I test it and find uh, issues with it. So in this video, I'm gonna actually uh, talk through replacing that logic and placing it onto a PSOC. So uh, I'm gonna walk through that. And then uh, you'll see that I'm also going to pull with that, pull out uh, many of the ICs that I have on the board. Um, also looking to uh, maybe split my board uh, left and right a little bit and put a bus board down the middle. And you can kind of see a picture of that here to the right. I'll talk more about that shortly. And then for now, I pulled the clock reset card up higher. Uh, that card is temporary also and will disappear once I get uh, the necessary ICs for the Intel uh, chips. Here is my current schematic as it sits today. Uh, you will notice that uh, even since my last uh, posting, my deco logic for the, the RAM has changed. Uh, as I got into it, I, I noticed that uh, it wasn't quite right. So this is what it currently looks like. Uh, and I'm kind of uh, really focusing in you know, on all of this down here uh, as some of that logic. You know, this up here was really to help cover the ROM access. And this down here was to cover a couple of things, both the uh, read from RAM and the write to RAM. Uh, just the logic of when these chips uh, should be enabled for reads or writes. And at this point, it seems to be working. Uh, I have code running that uh, is uh, starting at the, the reset vector or the reset address that the processor starts reading at. It is jumping to the beginning of, of usable ROM and it is executing some code that writes to RAM and reads from RAM. Uh, and I'm still working through that step by step, making sure I understand uh, everything that's happening on the processor itself. But it appears that my RAM writes and reads are working. Uh, I think I have more, more issues with my assembly code than, than the actual circuitry here. Uh, so that's something I have to work on. Uh, this is what the system currently looks like, and uh, you're going to notice a few things. Uh, I've added a little board here on the upper left that I'm going to talk about in just a second, uh, and I'm also kind of pushing that uh, reset clock card off the breadboard. Uh, my plan is to actually remove all of these ICs. So these ICs right now are really being used, uh, or at least maybe one of those will have to say an inverter, uh, but for the most part, these ICs are going to get removed. Uh, and I'm going to move all the logic into a PSOC. And uh, later in the video here, I'm going to just show you kind of what that looks like. And that PSOC is this, this up here. And it's a Cypress uh, PSOC that I'm using. And I'm basically going to build the logic in it. And I'm finding that uh, that's actually quite handy. And the, the benefit here is I'm going to run all of these common signals into that PSOC once, the ones that I'm going to use, whether it's S1, S0, MIO, or other. And then coming out of that PSOC, then I can have a nice clean uh, indicator for each of the, the well, let's say RAM uh, read, RAM write, ROM read, any other indicators. And you're going to see I've actually already done that uh, up here. Uh, I put in uh, those indicators for for those three things, RAM read, RAM write, and ROM read. Uh, and it simply lights up when those things are being accessed in that way, which is handy for debugging. Uh, and then also coming out of this, then there'll be a nice uh, clean single line I can run to each of the chips for each of the, the specific control signals. And the way that I'm setting this up, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit, is I'm having all of my inputs from the processor here, all of my LED debug LEDs coming out of here, and then any signals that actually go to control the chips will be down here. So I'm gonna remove a bunch of chips, add one PSOC in its place. Uh, I think that's gonna help clean this up quite a bit. Some other plan changes I have, I'm gonna split the breadboards further apart uh, so they're not uh, immediately adjacent. And down the middle, I am gonna use one of my previous PCBs. It's just a generic, bus board, I guess you could call it. 
so it has enough signals on it that I should be able to run the full 24 uh, address lines plus my 16 data lines uh, down this bus and I think there's even room for a, a little bit more if I want to put some other stuff on there but I do have room at the bottom for a different bus termination which is handy I've got room up top for uh, bar graphs I don't think I'll use those bar graphs uh, because that is going to be shown on the actual processor uh, which is another step I have coming up here that I will show you I also have these little PCBs on order that should be showing up here pretty soon that uh, really are just a power distribution. Uh, breadboards are always a pain for me when it comes to power distribution. I mentioned in a previous video that uh, my current wiring is, is very temporary uh, and that's because I want to put these in uh, in their place of those wires for power. Uh, basically it just connects to the rails uh, it's, it's got indicators per uh, board if i want to show uh, an led that there is power there uh, i've got uh, some some de decoupling capacitors etc um, so those will be nice to get in here and uh, the connections between those will actually be uh, soldered wires uh, so as i want to connect uh, power uh, i'll likely bring in another pcb i have which is a power distribution pcb and that'll probably sit up top here somewhere. It'll feed power into my uh, clock circuit that is temporary. It'll feed power into the um, board here if I need power on that board. I, I might not need any power. Uh, well, actually, I, I probably will, depending on how I do these terminations down here. Uh, and then the, it'll also connect, and I'll solder in connections to these, um, these rails, basically. Uh, one other thing that uh, maybe is a little further out, uh, maybe a few weeks down the road, uh, I'm going to replace uh, this processor PCB and the one that I'm going to use in its place uh, looks like this. And this actually snaps in half, so I'll, I'll have this uh, printed as a single, a single PCB. It's got four tiny little connections uh, here, 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 and here that connect the two halves of the board. Uh, and the, the intention is that you just snap it in half. And once I snap it in half, I'll have the processor on the bottom. This is pretty close to uh, my first revision that I'm using today, other than I did uh, add in some additional uh, power and uh, ground pins before I was just running a single power, single ground. Now I've got uh, quite a few more pins coming into that. And then they'll snap in half and I'll, I'll populate the top with a whole lot of surface mount stuff. And then that's what you'll actually see on the breadboard because it's going to stack basically. That'll stack on top of the underlying CPU uh, half of the PCB. Uh, so this should be what I hope to get to maybe in the next three to four weeks. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think I could probably uh, do a better job with a distribution of uh, a bunch of things, but uh, it might be that uh, this this whole processor here, uh, I move up and have it connect into the bus, and then maybe I'll put the ROM underneath it connecting into the bus, and then I can have the RAM connecting into the bus. Um, but I've got to play around with that, and I, I'll see if this PCB that I, I have that's just sitting in a box uh, works out for that or not. Here is the specific PSOC that I'm using. Uh, so this is from Cypress, or maybe it's pronounced Cypress. If anybody knows definitively, let me know there. Uh, but it's the CY8C Kit-059. Uh, and it's a handy uh, little board. And uh, I have an image of it just loaded here that uh, isn't real clear, but uh, should give you the idea. Um, so when I look at this uh, device, these are inexpensive. They're sub $15 US. And I, I purchased a few of them uh, about a year ago uh, based on a recommendation from someone on, on Reddit. Uh, and I just finally got around to pulling them out of the box here uh, recently. And they're really neat little devices. And uh, for decode logic, I could also use a PLD and that's what I've traditionally done in the past. I'm finding this PSOC is much easier to use and probably is much more capable than what I could do on a PLD. So anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to try using this and uh, I'll show you kind of why I, I like this uh, as I proceed here. Um, so this is what the board looks like. There is a part on it that uh, snaps off. It's a programmer and uh, here you can see uh, what that looks like. Just the part without the programmer, the programmer sits off to the left. 
Uh, so you can plug it into a USB port on your computer and basically program uh, how you want this PSOC to, to behave. Um, and I'm in this tool called PSOC Creator. Uh, this is from Cypress. And uh, basically it lets me configure how I want this uh, device to, to operate. And you can see there's a bunch of pins and, and these are labeled and, and I'll get more into that here shortly. Um, so what I did is I just came in and took my previous logic for my decode that uh, was has been evolving quite a bit, but I, I, I put the current version of it here in this design. So I just came in here and I, I came over to all the different things that I could use in this PSOC and, and there's some really nice capabilities, but I'm just using basic digital logic. Uh, so you can see here I've got inverters and I've got NAND gates and really that's that's about it. So I set up some pins to read in these five signals that I intend to use for all of my decode logic uh, or, or output enable uh, chip select logic for all of these chips, uh, ROM, RAM. And I, I put in this uh, set of NANDs, you know, these are a four in, a five in, a five in. And so that's really convenient. Um, as far as actual ICs I have, I can either go two in, four in, or eight in. But now here I've got just a nice clean five input uh, NAND. And then out of each of those, I've got a ROM output enable signal. So that's low when I want to enable ROM. I've got a RAM output enable and I've got a RAM uh, write enable. Uh, those are all active low signals. So I also put an inverted version of those signals out that will let me get a, an LED indicator anytime those are active. Uh, so I'll know every time I am reading from ROM or I'm reading from RAM or I'm writing to RAM. Uh, and then I just put in some quick uh, notes to, to just remind me what it is I'm looking at here. Uh, so these are the, the things I'm looking to be true to do a ROM read or the things to be true to do a RAM read or a RAM write. Uh, so you, you lay that out. You just drag out your different uh, logic gates or whatever other capabilities you want over here to the right. Uh, design it out and then from there I would go into the pins and the pins then lets me take all of those signals either input or output that I established on the previous design and actually assign them where they're gonna sit on on the board and so if I go back for a second and I look at the board you know here is P17, P16, 543 etc so now I can come over here and say, well, I want A19 to come in on P17, and I want my COD int A coming in on P16. I want these LEDs coming out P2654 uh, as an example. So if I go back to those LEDs for a second, you know, that's your P2654. So I'm indicating these three will be my output for those LEDs. Lots of room for other things that I can use on this, uh, but that's pretty simple and it's pretty clean uh, in my opinion as far as the how it's going to fit onto the breadboard. You know, it's one one little uh, lar well one one little large dip uh, that takes up some space. But uh, for my processor, I can run these five signals in once, so I just need a, a single wire for each of those, and I've got six wires coming out that'll go to my LEDs and down to my different uh, chips that need those signals. Uh, once I get done with this, then all I do is basically come in here and there's an option to program. So if I have the device plugged into my computer with the program side of it, which is this, you can't quite see it real well, but it's this half of it that plugs into a USB slot, program it, and uh, it writes that and it's persisted. So I don't have to rewrite it every time uh, I, I repower the device. And uh, then you can snap it in half uh, and you'll see what I've done is I've actually then put pin headers on these two halves so I can reconnect them easily and reprogram it uh, from USB whenever I need to. Um, so that then gets me to uh, maybe a next step. So I've got some decode logic chips to pull off my breadboard. I have this to finish wiring up. Uh, what I have done with this so far is I have connected it in and, and in the video you'll see that the, the output LEDs are showing proper ROM read, RAM read, RAM write. Uh, so I'm processing all the logic already, uh, this logic here. I just simply don't have the outputs yet going to the chips. It's still using the, 
the current separate ICs to do that. Um, but that's my next step is to pull all of those ICs and clean it up uh, just with these uh, nice clean outputs here. So hopefully in the coming weeks you'll see this breadboard get a little bit cleaner and more manageable as far as wires are concerned because uh, it's only going to get uh, worse I guess as I move forward with additional uh, ICs that I add to the board. I'm hoping in the next few weeks I should also have some of the uh, complementary chips that Intel uses in their basic design, uh, whether that's for the clock generation or uh, managing the bus or latching, or whatever it might be. Uh, and at that point, that might cause me to completely rethink uh, my layout here. And uh, I might even start a separate breadboard for that versus this version that doesn't have any of those extra chips. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like as we get there. Thanks for watching.